Hey, y'all. Um, so, we're going to hop right into chapters 13 and 14. Let's get this show on the road with a little bit of Wayside School. It gets a little stranger. Okay, chapter 13. The new teacher. Let me take a little. Let me take a little sip of this old this old coffee real quick. Just get the get the old energy rolling. All right. The new teacher. The new teacher entered the classroom carrying a big blue notebook stuffed with papers. She had white hair and wore glasses. She was a lot older than anyone else in the class. She took a big breath. My, it's tiring walking up all those stairs, isn't it? She said. Nobody said anything. They just stared at her. She set her notebook on, that te on the teacher's desk. My name is Mrs. Drizil, she said, and I'm not from Brazil. She smiled at her little joke. Nobody else smiled. After Mrs. and Mr. Gorf, they didn't trust teachers. Drizil, thought Dee Dee, where have I heard that name before? Where are you from? asked Leslie. Actually, I was born not too far from here, said Mrs. Drizil. Then why did you say you came from Brazil? asked Benjamin. No, I said I wasn't from Brazil, said Mrs. Drizil. Have you ever been to Brazil? asked Eric Fly. No, explained Mrs. Drizil. It, uh... It was just a little it was just a little joke. Brazil rhymes with Drizil. I thought it might help you remember my name. Terence laughed. Drizil, Brazil, he shouted. That's funny. Several other kids laughed too, but not Dee Dee. She had learned of Mrs. Drizil somewhere. Excuse me, she had heard of Mrs. Drizil somewhere. She was sure of it. And whatever she had heard, she was sure it wasn't good. What's a Brazil? asked Eric Evans. Brazil is the largest country in South America, said Mrs. Drizil. Oh, said Eric Evans. I thought it was one of those things that, you know, women wear, you know, on their bosom. Several kids laughed. No, that's a brazier, said Mrs. Drizil. There was more laughter. Stephen was shocked. She said brazier, he whispered, right in class. I know I heard her, said Jason, but Dee Dee still didn't trust her, even if she did say brazier right out loud. There was a television show that Dee Dee liked to watch. It was about real criminals. At the end of the show, they always asked the viewers to call the police if they knew where any of the criminals were. Dee Dee wondered if she had seen Mrs. Drizil on that show. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask me? Asked Mrs. Drizil. Ron raised his hand. Mrs. Drizil pointed to him. How old are you? Asked Ron. Dana gasped. You're not supposed to ask someone that, she said. Especially someone as old as Mrs. Drizil. Let me try that one again in Max voice. Especially someone as old as Mrs. Drizil, said Mac. Mrs. Drizil smiled. I don't mind, she said. I'm 66 years old. You can ask me anything you want. Anything, asked Joy. I'm a teacher, said Mrs. Drizil. That's what I'm here for. Paul raised his hand. How much do you weigh, he asked. 124 pounds, said Mrs. Drizil. How much money do you make? asked Eric Bacon. I'm a substitute teacher, explained Mrs. Drizil, so I only make money on days that I teach. Then I make $51.18 a day. What a ripoff, said Jenny. You should make at least 200. That would be nice, said Mrs. Drizil, but I'm a teacher because I love to teach. I love to see young children learn. Joy raised her hand. How many men have you kissed in your whole life? Oh my gosh, Joy. Mrs. Drizil thought a moment as she appeared to be counting on her fingers. 31, she said. Everyone gasped. <sighs> Dee Dee raised her hand. Mrs. Drizil smiled at her. 
Yes, the girl in the pretty flowered t-shirt. Have you ever been to jail? Have you ever been in jail? Asked Dee Dee. No, said Mrs. Drizil. Are the police after you? No, said Mrs. Drizil. Dee Dee still didn't trust her. Okay, said Mrs. Drizil. Before we get started, I wanted to say one more thing. I enjoy teaching so much that sometimes I get a little carried away. I talk too much, so if I start to get boring, will somebody please raise your hand and tell me? For real? asked Todd. You want us to tell you to stop talking? And we won't get in trouble? asked Bebe. No, of course not, said Mrs. Drizil. You'll be helping me in the rest of your class. You're not going to learn anything if you're bored. Cool, said Terrence. Oh, I suppose when I first started teaching, I used to be a little more strict, said Mrs. Drizil. I even worried about things like whether my students had clean fingernails or if their shirts were tucked in. She laughed. <laughs> but times have changed. I've changed. Besides, the kids were a lot worse back then, at least some of them. For just a second, her sweet face turned sour as she looked at her notebook on her desk. Then she smiled again. I believe teaching requires mutual cooperation. I will cooperate with you, and you need to cooperate with me. If we work together, we will have a very enjoyable learning experience. Her face turned sour again. But if you cross me, you will be very, very sorry. She ran her, her fingers over her blue notebook. Oh, maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow, but someday I will get you. You can run, but you can't hide. She smiled. Okay, let's get started. Chapter 14. A light bulb, a pencil sharpener, a coffee pot, and a sack of potatoes. Galileo was a great scientist, said Mrs. Drizil. He was born in Italy in 1564 and died in 1642. He was the first person to use a telescope to study the stars, and he also helped figure out the laws of gravity. Oh, I know about gravity, said Joe. Mrs. Jules pushed a computer out the window. It fell a lot faster than a pencil. I don't think so, said Mrs. Drizil. Galileo proved that all objects fall at the same speed. He conducted a very famous experiment. He dropped lots of different objects off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is in Italy. It was built in, Todd raised his hand. You're getting a little boring, he said. Oh my goodness, am I? Asked Mrs. Drizil. Rondi, Leslie, Paul, and Calvin nodded their heads. I'm sorry, said Mrs. Drizil. She thought a moment. I know, she exclaimed. Let's do the experiment here. The children cheered. Yay! They loved experiments. Mrs. Drizil rubbed her hands together. Let's see. We'll need a coffee pot, a pencil sharpener, a light bulb, and she thought a moment. We need something heavy. An elephant's heavy, said Benjamin. There are no elephants in Wayside School, said Mrs. Drizil. Everyone laughed. How about a sack of potatoes, asked Ron. I bet Miss Mush has one. Go see, said Mrs. Drizil. There's a coffee pot down in the office, said Stephen. Go get it, said Mrs. Drizil. If I had a screwdriver, I could get the pencil sharpener off the wall, said Eric Fly. I've got a screwdriver, said Jenny. Can we use a fluorescent light bulb, asked BB. She looked up at the ceiling. I guess so, said Mrs. Drizil. How do I get it? Asked BB. You're the scientist, said Mrs. Drizil. You figure it out. <clears throat> BB put her chair on top of her desk and stood on it. She still couldn't reach the ceiling. Hey, Benjamin, will you let me have your chair? She put Benjamin's chair on top of hers, but she still wasn't tall enough. Calvin dumped the waste paper basket onto the floor. Try this, he said. Bibi turned the trash can upside down and put it on top of Benjamin's chair. Then she climbed on top, but she still couldn't quite reach. Leslie brought the class dictionary. Jenny and Dana donated their math books. Sherry grabbed Mrs. Drizil's old blue notebook. Put that down, yelled Mrs. Drizil. 
right now. Jerry dropped the notebook. Mrs. Drazil's kindly old face suddenly turned mean. Don't ever touch that again, Mrs. Drazil ordered. Jerry returned, trembling to her seat. Everyone was staring at Mrs. Drazil. She smiled sweetly. Go back to what you were doing, she said. Jason threw B.B. his lunchbox. She set it on top of the books, then climbed on top. Standing on her tiptoes, she was able to pull the cover off the fluorescent light. She grabbed the light just as the pile collapsed beneath her. She fell to the ground, triumphantly holding the unbroken light bulb high above her head. Ron returned with a sack of potatoes for Miss Mush. Stephen returned with Mr. Kidswater's coffee pot. Eric Fly unscrewed the pencil sharpener from the wall. Mrs. Drazil wrote, coffee pot, sack of potatoes, pencil sharpener, and the light bulb on the blackboard. We're going to drop all four objects out the window at the same time, she said. How many people think the coffee pot will hit the ground first? Is there coffee in it? Asked John. It's about half full, Stephen reported. Eight kids thought the coffee pot would hit the ground first. Sixteen thought the sack of potatoes would hit the ground first. Three thought the light bulb would be first. Only Terrence thought the pencil sharpener would hit first. Jason, Jenny, Joe, John, and Joy were the judges. <sighs> Mrs. Drizel sent them outside. Stephen held the coffee pot out one window. Bebe held the light bulb out another. Eric Fry held the pencil sharpener out another. And Ron held out the sack of potatoes. Everyone else crowded around to watch. With everyone on the same side of the classroom, the school leaned a little bit, just like the leaning tower of Pisa. On your mark, get set, let go, said Mrs. Drizel. The objects fell through the air and smashed against the pavement. A short while later, the judges returned. Their clothes were splattered with coffee. Jenny had bits of potato in her hair. Was the pencil sharpener first, asked Terrence. It happened so fast, said Joe. They all hit about the same time. But the coffee pot made the coolest explosion, said Jason. I think the light bulb hit the ground last, said John. Well, that's possible, said Mrs. Drazil. Gravity causes all objects to fall at the same rate, but air slows them down. That's called air resistance, and that's good. Otherwise, raindrops would kill us. Air resistance slows all things down a little bit, but it has a greater effect on very light objects, such as a piece of paper. And of course, the shape of the paper is important too. A crumpled up piece of paper will fall faster than... You're getting boring again, said Mac. Mrs. Drizil stopped talking. Now we need a new pencil sharpener, said Leslie. Paul licked her ear. There he goes. Paul finally did it. Paul licked Leslie's ear because she said, what? Just a reminder. All right. That was chapters 13 and 14. I dare y'all, triple dog dare y'all to take that quiz below. Also, keep reading at home. Look at all these books. Mr. Smith loves reading. Keep reading. Read, read, read. Talk to y'all soon. Love y'all.